Alright, the GRA 1866-74 conversion and some of the questions and problems that I've discovered in my research uh, on the rifle before we start reloading it and getting in depth here. What we have here on the table is we have three different rifles. We have our first one, which is the French Chaspo needle fire gun. And then we have the GRA 1866-74, which is a Chaspo that has been converted to fire metallic cartridges other than the needle fire paper cartridges. And then we have the GRA 1874 with the M80 modification. <clears throat> so let's take a look at them and what I'm going to do is show you how you can identify each one. We'll start with the simple thing. You see the chaspo, the bolt is different. Looks pretty simple. And the chaspo, you have to cock the needle back like this before you can open the bolt. The converted gun has a gra bolt in it. Pretty normal. And then there's the 1874 gra. So they look the same. Now, I'm going to pull the bolts open and show you the differences there. First, we're going to look at the chaspo. Now, the rubber seal is missing <coughs> on it. I, I don't store it with that rubber gasket. But you notice it's long. There'd be a rubber thing spacing this out, and then a needle comes out that snout. But if you notice, when you close the bolt, where... This is going into this part of the receiver. <clears throat> this is something to take note of because it comes up in the conversion. So like I said, when they converted it, it's just got a, you know, grab bolt and looks like a normal gun. How the conversion was done is they changed the bolt assembly. They took the barrel out of the receiver. They bored out the barrel they placed a sleeve in the barrel and then when they thread the barrel back the way it worked they had to bore out the, the rifle or the barrel I'm sorry put the sleeve in there the sleeve locks in with some ribs or tabs and then when they thread the barrel back into the receiver it holds the whole thing in there and then they remachine and rebore out uh, a chamber for the metallic cartridge but this receiver is longer so the sleeve has an area in front of it I think about one inch which is a constricted down and I'll explain that and there's a section of freeboard now after I fired this gun and cleaned it I can see all of that pretty uh, easily and also when if you go and push a jag with a patch down from the bore you from the bore end down when you get to the receiver you can feel where the constriction or the difference is <clears throat> now this is a purpose-built one and the M80 is this cut out here where my finger is what they did is they cut out a groove in there and what happens is when the bolt is closed and if a cartridge ruptures, okay, the back of the cartridge burst open. And like I said, M80, when the cartridge ruptures, that cutout will vent gas from that cutout there and down in the bottom of the receiver. This gun here does not have that cutout. It does not have the M80 uh, modification. And that's all it is, is a way for the gas to vent. Now, let's take a look at them side by side, and I'll show you how to tell from the markings what gun you have. First, the model number. On this side of the receiver will be where the model number is. I tried to put some white on there, but it, it didn't work. But here it is, the arsenal. Model 1866. This is the chassis. That's how it's generally marked. 
Now this one's going to be hard to see. And you see the 1866-74. It was added on in this area here. There's some space. That shows you that it was a chest bow and it was converted. It's been re-blued and worn so it's hard to see. I tried to get it but I couldn't. And now the 1874. Here you have uh, the Arsenal again. Model 1874 and down on the lower side they would stamp the M80 modification. So if you see that on a receiver that's what it means. And the guns, <clears throat> without the modification, somebody had a question, why have a gun that doesn't have the M80 modification, is it safe to fire? Yes, it was just that the metallurgy of the day and cases had a tendency to rupture that was added so it didn't blow hot gas over the top of the bolt in your eyeball. And that's all it was. But if you're reloading Keeping it safe, it should not be a problem not having the M80 modification. Okay, now another thing <clears throat> for a quick identification. So a lot of times when you're looking at a gun, you can't disassemble it in the store. They're not going to let you take it out of stock and look at it. So I'm giving you a quick way with what's visible how to check it. <clears throat> now this is the chest bow. And on this side of the barrel, the ME... MA, MA is probably an inspection stamp of some sort or accepted stamp. If you look in this area, right there is the date, 1872, S1872. So <clears throat> that's how you tell the date it was made. Now in a modified gun, and it's hard to see, if you look uh, see there's a C stamp there, there's an 18, ah, here we go, hold on, there's a C, it's 1873, you can barely see it, and then S80, which must be 1880 is when they converted the gun. Now, I don't know what the C means, but I guess in this area, if they did not bore out the chamber and replaced the barrel on this, some of these will have the barrel replaced without the chamber sleeve. Where that C is, I believe, should be an M. That would designate that you had, even though the receiver's marked as a conversion, it got a new barrel. It didn't get uh, bored out and rechambered. And as we see on this one, 1879, date of manufacture. Now, that gives you a quick way to check what type of uh, 6674 you're getting and how to tell if the barrel's been replaced or it has a sleeve chamber. This has a sleeve chamber. And so now I'm going to go my board and give you a diagram and try to explain what the problem is with the sleeve chamber and why it, it's, there's a restriction in there. And I'll draw you a picture, it'll be easier to see. Also, I slugged the bores on both of these guns. This one, the 74, I drove the slug through. <coughs> this one, I drove it down about 10 inches and pushed it back out because I didn't want to hit the area, if there's a constriction, it'll throw my slug off. This one slugged out to about 454, 455. And this one slugged out about 453. So, using a bullet size to 446 like I was is not the most accurate thing. And, and this is where there's a little bit of confusion. Because I'll show you another bullet that the one French fella did up uh, that's healed that has a driving band on there about 454. Alright, you're going to have to excuse my drawing. I'm no artist. This is the chassis barrel chamber. There's where that little 
snout and that comes in, so this chamber will be longer. This is the gra chamber. Just a standard barrel, shoulder, come up, you got your little throat area. Well, this distance will be higher than this. <clears throat> so an exaggeration, the orange shows how they bored out an area. They bored out the old chamber until they hit solid rifling. But it's longer, okay? It's longer by now. I got this information um, off of a forum. And these fellows that write this are, are in France or they know the guys in France. They get their actual technical information and translate it from their native language. And it has measurements here. And it goes on about how they bored it out, how they shrank it in there. And then when you screw the barrel back on, that hits the face of the uh, receiver and keeps it in place. Okay? But when you cut the correct length for the uh, gra cartridge, there's a gap here for, you know, where they machined out the uh, chamber, the old chamber, till it engaged rifling. <clears throat> and it's about 27 millimeter or 1 inch 63 thousandths from the end of the chamber to where the rifling starts. So what they did is they made this diameter 439 thousandths, which is a lot smaller than, you know, the groove diameter if you're trying to put a bullet in there, a 458 or something, 439, that's a big difference. So there's that little one inch gap you're jumping. If you take this paper patch bullet and measure where the paper is up here, it comes out to about 439. So how this would work is a paper pa patched bullet would be in there and it fits snug or just a thou under. When you fire it travels through and this chamber is tight or this little this constriction keeps the pressure up over that one inch. So then when it hits the open bore up here it'll bump it up, bump the bullet up, and then this bullet will act just like, it's kind of like a chamber extension is what it is for a certain type of bullet. But if you're putting a giant, you know, 45 caliber bullet in there, you're squeezing the hell out of it before it gets in there. You know, you're shaving the bullet. That's the problem. Okay? That's what I'm trying to point out. I hope that explains it. And it's a lengthy process, but that's what we got to watch for. That's why I'm going to try to see. Now, I've ran some through this chamber, the 446, fairly soft lead. And as you see, my accuracy wasn't good. Now, actually, that lead, I can't tell if it's uh, 120 or it might be wheel weights. So, I have some soft lead, almost pure lead which I may run a uh, black powder or a smokeless load to, or maybe one of each, and see how it reacts and if the accuracy is better. Then we have the M74, which is a straight plain barrel, that we can see how that compares to the modified gun. Okay, I hope that explains it. Thank you.